Welcome to Sports Beat KC, the Kansas City Star's daily sports podcast. It's Tuesday, November 24th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. The KC Ruse men's and women's basketball seasons opened this week, and both programs were winners in 2020 when the season ended abruptly. Billy Donlin led the men's program to a 16 and 14 record and became the second coach since the program reclassified to Division I in the late 1980s to post a winning record in his first season. The men's team returns starters Brandon McKissick and Marvin Nesbitt and is picked to finish seventh of nine teams in the Summit League. The women's team was terrific last season, winning its first conference championship. After a break, coach J.C. Hoyt, who's beginning her fourth season, will tell us about the team's emotions after the thrill of a title run and then the disappointment of not playing in the conference tournament. Both coaches take us through navigating an off-season through the COVID-19 pandemic. Remember, college basketball paid a huge price. No conference tournaments for many and NCAA tournament for none when the season was called off. So let's get started talking Casey Ruse, first with men's coach Billy Donlin. Yeah, I think that's, you know, the first thing is that you're worried about the well-being of your current players. Um, and I mean, all your players that you've coached, you check in on them, but the guys that are on the roster now that are on your team now, their well-being um, from the minute that we left Las Vegas from the WAC tournament uh, when it got canceled, um, and rightfully so, to um, you know, through that time, once once everybody got home safely, uh, and we and we didn't have the handle on the virus or, or the knowledge uh, about the virus that certainly we have now as a country, um, I think that was a it's a scary time still, uh, but I think it was scarier then because we didn't have as much information and uh, and the science and the data, so. Um, you know, it's been like no other time where I don't, uh, and I think the other part of it is I've always, um, being the son of a coach, I think you learn that you learn pretty quickly that our profession, we all just steal from everybody else. You know, we all, we, we're, you're not allowed to plagiarize when you're in school, but man, as a coach, plagiarism is accepted. Uh, and almost you better do it if you want to have success. And so, being a coach as a kid, I knew at an early age, like trying to talk to as many different coaches, people, players, to grow your own knowledge. But on this one, nobody's ever been through it. And so you certainly, you know, I'd reached out to Chris Collins. I reached out to Brad Burnell. I reached out to Coach Beeline uh, and many others. But none of us, had, no one had ever been through it. And so you're, you're, you're still taking educated guesses on what you should do. Um, and... You know, it's been a trying time. We've got great kids. We've got a great support system, uh, great families. Um, and so we've just tried to do the best we can and uh, in managing it with our current guys. And then you're managing it. Your staff has families. Your staff, my coaching staff is married. Many of them are married and have kids themselves. I'm, My wife's pregnant, which is a blessing, uh, obviously. But it's uh, we have a 19-month-old at home. I have a 15-year-old daughter. And I don't say that we're, everybody in the, in the country is going through it. Uh, but you're you're managing all these different things at a time that because let's face it, when you're a college coach, um, hopefully job number one is developing young men. Uh, hopefully that I get it. If you don't win enough, they fire you. I've experienced that firsthand. If they're not happy with you, they fire you. But at the end of the day, you can do a good job and get fired. Um, but can you look in the mirror and hope that you're doing the right thing by your kids? Uh, and that's for me always is has always been job one. So. Um, then with recruiting, it's it's a challenge. It's a great challenge on a lot of levels because, and this happened in the spring. I don't think people have talked about this enough. Um, our our business, um, if you're if you're looking at the the total of all the Division One schools, Blair, it, I, I don't necessarily mean the Kansases, the Dukes, the Kentuckys, but I think the majority of recruiting now happens in the spring. More players get signed, more transfers, grad transfers, junior college players happen in the spring. And so when you look at March, everything being shut down, already on, on rosters for this year, for the current season that hopefully we're going to play, kids made choices without seeing schools. Coaches didn't get to meet in person with young people that are on their roster. I didn't get to go look a young man in his eyes, shake his hand, meet his mom, meet his dad, and, and physically meet people. And so that's that's happened, and that's happening again now with kids that have we we have three players that signed early with us for for next year, and 
Uh, I did meet one of them because he's local, but the other two players I've, I've never physically met, and we're doing what you and I are doing over Zoom calls. And is it fair that young people got to make such a significant decision? It's going to be one of their three, four, or five biggest decisions that they'll make in their life uh, about where they're going to go to college to play basketball without seeing a place, without physically meeting a student, with a, a fellow teammate. We set up Zoom calls. I set up Zoom calls with our recruits to meet with our kids without any of the coaches on the call. So they could just, we just organized it and then hung up and then they could ask whatever they wanted. But we tried to do the best we could to make parents, kids comfortable and to make ourselves comfortable too, because we're, we're on the other side of the, of, of the, of the deal. So I, I don't have any great, I don't know if it's gone well, if it hasn't gone well, I really don't know. Um, I, I think it's gone better than not because our, our players are happy. Our current players are happy. I think their families are happy. Um, with how we've handled everything. And I, I, I gave you a really, really long winded answer, but it's a lot of time has passed. So I apologize for that, but that um, th- there's a lot. Yeah. But it, as you said, though, we're everybody's in the same boat, all 350 division one and, and all the D twos and threes and NAIAs and everybody, you know, the thousands of, in the, in the tens of thousands that play college basketball, all in the same boat, all, Facing the, the the challenge of a lifetime, really this um, you know this this summer and and who knows when it's uh, when it's going to end. How did how did you handle it with your team, especially returning players? Um, did you have some on campus this summer, or, and and how how did that work? They came back. Uh, they came back right around July fourth. That area, I, I'd have to look up the exact date, but it was right around that area was when we decided. I think we brought them back before the July fourth weekend. Uh, so they weren't at risk. And I think, look, everything's getting argued on both sides of this, however you feel about it. Um, but we had, I think, five players when they come back were already positive. Mm. Um, and so I don't know if they would have found that out had they not come back. But we brought them back. Uh, guys took uh, online summer classes. Um, I think uh, give our athletic training department, Truman Medical, who's been a, who's been a terrific partner uh, of ours, um, we followed their protocols initially for a long time. I would say nine weeks. Um, everybody had masks. Everybody had gloves on. The players did not have gloves on. Um, but we only had groups of four in a workout. There was no uh, competitive things in terms of guys going against each other. Um, uh, you're, we have three assistants and myself, and so that coach would be that one, a player's partner for the entire workout. Um, so I think we did a – Back then, we did an unbelievable job, and we still practice with our masks on. A lot of schools are not, and I'm not criticizing those schools, but our players are still practicing with their masks on. Um, wow. And so I, I think, I do think, though, and, you know, look, I put on 30 pounds through the first four months of COVID. It, you know, like I went home, I stayed with my in-laws. I joked with my mother-in-law that I think she was trying to kill me. There was like M&Ms and donuts <laughs> and like Butterfingers, all my favorites, like I was all around the house, and I can't say no, like, the only chance I have is if they're not there. And my mother-in-law knows that about me. So I think she was trying to get me fat and happy and in the hospital. And so, um, you know, the fact, but I've started to work out again. I've lost 15 of the 30 pounds. I've got to, I've got to get it down. But my point is the exercise for the players, the ability to participate in weights and run up and down a court and shoot shots. I think the, that helped their mental health. I really believe that in my heart. I know as a coach, everybody's going to say, you just want to play. And I get that criticism. Um, but I really believe that like just having some form of normalcy uh, really helped our guys. Uh, and so that's what we did for the first eight or nine weeks. It wasn't until September um, that we were allowed to go with, 10 guys at once and even then early September we couldn't go live so I think we were one of the the last uh schools to go live and go contact let's get into the team a little bit you you got a couple a handful of guys with starts under their belts but a couple with uh that you'd consider returning starters in Brandon McKissick and um and uh Nesbitt um uh so uh, how do you how do you build around those guys, and is is that the idea going in? Well, certainly um, offensively, we you know the ball is going to be in Brandon's Brandon uh, B Max hands a lot, and we're going to play with with him um, a lot of the times. I think Marvin uh, is our best returning three point shooter. Uh, he's a 
really tough kid uh, that can defend four positions and then the defending, depending on how small you play, occasionally he could guard a five man, an undersized five in, in today's modern basketball. So Marvin's um, strengths are not always look, you don't always see it in a box score, you know, uh, what he brings to a table. Uh, and uh, but in terms of Brandon will be the one we, we give the ball to, and he's going to have to make a lot of the plays down the stretch. There's some pressure on him there, but you're a senior, and so that's what you sign up for. Um, and, you know, I think everybody else, the guys that you refer to, Zion, uh, who, who started toward the end of the year, Frank Camgain, who's from Kansas City, uh, and then Josiah Alec, who's a sophomore, who we're, we think is going to be really good. All those guys, and this is not, it just, I think we have one of those teams that early on we're, going, we're probably going to get hit in the mouth some um, because all these guys have to grow into different roles. Even the returning guys that played significant minutes. Really, the only guy that's in the similar role that he was in last year will be Brandon because we gave him the ball a lot last year. And I don't mean that as excuse making if we don't win some games early. I do think we're a team that can develop and compete for a Summit League championship. It's just, you're just not going to, I don't think we're going to see it immediately. Uh, and if you don't see it by January or February, then certainly criticize me. I, I, I'm, I raise both hands in the air. But I think we, we have some youth. We have some guys that need to get game experience. And you know what? If there was ever a, a, the, the, the worst time to not be able to play a scrimmage against somebody else with a certain team, it's th- with our team this year. And I'm not, again, like, we don't have a veteran group back. Like, you do learn by, you know, getting maybe getting hit in the mouth a little bit in a closed scrimmage against another Division One school where you can show your young guys, this is what we've been telling you in practice. Uh, and, and sometimes they need that. And, uh, you know, us not having that, and nobody else has had it. But I think if we had a veteran team, I don't think it would be as big of a deal. Um, so we just kind of get caught in that crossfire a little bit. But I'm excited about our team. I agree with you. I think, you know, the, the trade-off from the WAC, there's nobody in the summit as good as New Mexico's and I don't mean that disrespectful. The Summit has some excellent teams. But from top to bottom, uh, you know, right now the Summit top to bottom is a tougher league. And so just it's pick your poison. Do you want to have more balance or have that time where you got to, in order to make the NCAA tournament, you got to beat a, a Goliath like New Mexico State. Um, and so it, it's uh, the great challenge of the Summit is it's the best three-point shooting league in the country. It's like nothing I've ever seen. They, they're top three in percentage and makes – and you know, being a basketball guy, Blair, that's really hard. A lot of times, if you shoot a really high percentage, you shoot good shots and you don't make as many, right? Or if you make a lot, you shoot a lower percentage because you, you're a high-volume three-point shooting team. This league is both. They make a ton and they shoot a high percentage. And so it's a, just from that standpoint, it's going to be a great challenge. But, but it's a positive because we have more natural rivals. Omaha's two and a half hours away. Or Roberts isn't far you know, South Dakota is a car ride. Like, we have more natural rivals, and, and we just didn't have that in the whack. So we're excited about that. We really are. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners, unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, And it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star. And that support has never been more important. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. I wouldn't say it was easy by any means. Um, I mean, it's still not easy. You know, you just feel like there was uh, something that was robbed from you. And um, it was a really hard conversation to have with our players. And, um, you know, just nothing can really ever prepare you for something like that. Um, So it certainly wasn't easy and uh, something that, you know, I think about, you know, daily, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, just perspective is really important. And there's a lot bigger things that have been going on in our country um, since that all started uh, with COVID hitting us. And 
So, you know, just perspective, I think, is really crucial. And uh, we talk about perspective every day as a team and just really try to be grateful for what we do have, um, knowing that just like our postseason was taken from us, um, you know, other things can be taken as well. So it, it bittersweet is, is a good way to put it. Um, it. It's taught us a lot of lessons and um, uh, it, it's really unfortunate that it happened that way. But at the same time, I think um, it's made us all better people. It's made me a better coach. It's made our players have a different perspective that they wouldn't have without that happening. We actually did not have our team here this summer. Um, oh, I made that okay. choice um, for us on, on the women's side um, just to, um, you know, I, I don't think there was a right or a wrong way to go about it, but I felt that it was best um, for our players to stay home with their families. And um, we have such strict protocol here that um, a lot of them were better off wherever they were at home in terms of having the resources to work out. Um, so we, we didn't actually get together as a team until school started. Um, but you're right. We have certainly connected in different ways. And, you know, the, the thing about this team is all of those things that we've been going through have helped us grow and, um, you know, mature and, and see things differently. But at the same time, we've always been an incredibly close, and connected team and I mean we saw that you know in our championship season so it's just been cool to connect in other ways outside of basketball yeah so I imagine a lot of um a lot of zoom a lot of a lot of hanging out a lot of uh did, did you um uh did you monitor workouts that way this summer as well did you have have the players uh just keep you updated on what they were doing on a, on a pretty regular basis yeah we did we met weekly the as a team, um, I had weekly one-on-one uh, Zooms or phone calls with each of them. And, you know, it, it was really a challenge for me as a coach because I had to really kind of let go of some of that control that we normally have when they're here with us. Um, and I and we just really, as coaches, had to trust, you know, that they were doing the right things because with the NCA restrictions, um, we, we couldn't necessarily – you know, have that control that we've had in the past. Um, and then it was, it was a real challenge because I'm, I mean, for example, one of our best returning players, you know, she, she lived on the 26th floor of a high rise building in Chicago where, you know, she, she did it. They, they were in such a lockdown there. I mean, she couldn't get in a gym for the longest time. She couldn't go to a park. Um, we had to mail, you know, basketballs and, and bands and um, things of that sort for them to even have something um, to work out with. Um, but then on the flip side, you know, we, we had a player who actually has a, a gym in her backyard, um, an indoor gym in a barn. So it, you just, we were really stretched as coaches to kind of be creative and help them find different ways to, you know, stay active. But the main priority for us was really just their mental health and helping them feel connected mentally and emotionally with their teammates. Right. Right. Um, I, yeah, I can imagine. So, so you didn't get the team back until school reopened and, mm-hmm. um, okay. And uh, the team that you got back is like, I mean, like every season it's, it, it's different. It's, it'll have its own, you know, it, its own identity, its own, you know, its own personality. And, um, has the, you know, has, has the, the, the situation that we're in, uh, have you been able to, you know, maintain the, the type of progress that w- you would have in a normal year with, with developing a team or has, has that been a challenge as well? Yeah. You know, I think it's all relative. Um, so we have seen a lot of progress and improvement from the time we got them on campus and, I'm really proud of the way that they have handled um, just all of the COVID restrictions, but also just making good choices, you know, um, and I I know this could happen to anyone. It could happen to us at any given time, but so far, I mean, we have really been able to stay on track. We haven't had very many positive cases. Um, You know, we, we haven't had to shut down, um, because of our team, I mean, we've really been able to, um, I think, get more practice time than some other uh, programs. 
again, I, I know that I don't judge that at all. Cause I know that, you know, we could be that program tomorrow, but, um, it, it's been a challenge, but at the same time, I think that we've progressed really well. And, um, you know, again, just the, the perspective that we have. Um, so one of the things that we have really embraced is just this attitude of gratitude this year. And so every single practice that we get to have, you know, we, we celebrate it, we soak it all in. Um, not that it's not hard, but man, we sure just appreciate it in a different way. So, um, it's been good. You know, I, I've been proud of, like I said, the way they've handled it and, and just the progress and improvement they've made. And, um, we're just now, I think, starting to gel and get that chemistry um, that we are going to need to carry us through the season. And I think we're figuring it out, hopefully, at the right time. We'll, we'll see you next week. That'll do it for today. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, Chris Fickett, and Savannah Smith. Links to stories about UMKC, the KC Ruse, can be found in the show notes and on KansasCity.com. Hey, we've got another deal for you, especially for those that want a deep dive into the star's terrific Chiefs coverage. For a limited time, you can subscribe to Sports Pass for 99 cents a month. That's right, 99 pennies a month. After three months, it auto renews at $5.99 a month unless you cancel. How do you get it? You go to KansasCity.com slash Sports Pass 2020. That's KansasCity.com slash Sports Pass 2020. Do you want more than just sports coverage? I know I do. Check out the entire Kansas City Star product sports news features, commentary, analysis, the whole thing. You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional news, sports, and business coverage coverage with the E-Edition. The details for all of these deals can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And I know that's a lot of dots and dashes. And if you're having trouble hunting down any of these offers, send me an email at bkirkoff at kcstar.com, and I'll get you to the right place. So, Whether it's the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're getting in supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports Beat KC. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back on Wednesday with another episode.